Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm going to be doing a little bit more of a more competitively oriented just game set and match again, basically, because that's kind of like what I try to focus on mainly. But this is going to be some Mermel Frog games versus Paleozoic Frogs. Now, uh, this is a matchup that's really weird, <laughs> and honestly, the Mermel deck might actually just change with uh, the addition of Zodiac Beast cards because of the fact that you could do the OSHA play into a Zodiac Beast play potentially. Uh, but like ultimately, I don't know if that's worth even experimenting with. But I do really like the uh, the totally awesome Mermel Frog deck. I mean, obviously I liked it. I played it at YCS Anaheim and did very well with it and only didn't top because of tiebreaker status. But basically. Uh, this is something, this is a build that I've just been playing around with. Basically, nothing too serious, although I do think that uh, if I tried to play this deck at like a regional or something post-Zoo format, I would probably play something that looked very much like this, maybe swapping out Twin Twisters for the Max Seas back in the main or something like that. Uh, but basically, just going to be uh, playing some matchups of basically the, this current format that we're in pre-Zoo. Um, because basically I'm I'm sensing a lot of people being tired of uh, of a lot of zoo stuff being on YouTube so decided to take a little break from that and the person that I decided to play for this video he wanted to play Paleozoic Frog so I was like alright well, let's go for it but anyway that is enough uh, enough little banter for the first part of the video showing this deck on screen uh, but otherwise if you're curious as to how I'm picking people for playing in these videos I'm playing them off of my discord server which if you want access to my Discord server, go check out my Patreon page, which is linked down below. The people that go to the $10 reward tier are actually the people that get access to my private Discord server, and they talk to me on a daily basis. And whenever I want to get games, I go to them, and I say, hey, you want to play? And they're like, yeah, let's let's play. And we decide to match up, and we decide to go from there. But basically, that's all there is for that. Let's just jump straight into the first game and uh, see... How this is going to go as far as how this matchup functions I mean you probably should know how it functions by now but let's just see what the games yield shall we all right so going into the first game he gets to start because he won rock paper scissors and he starts with a toad or not a toad a swap frog and unfortunately he's not able to make a totally awesome and so he just sets three and passes now my hand is actually incredibly strong with Teus dragoons and I'm expecting to be stopped at some point but my hand is actually just really strong and can handle it but I have double infantry in my hand, and infantry is actually just really kind of dead in this matchup because the only thing it really is good for is for baiting toads uh, to negate on it or else it's going to die, or for popping toads. Um, because basically, like, <laughs> your Paleozoic cards are not affected by monster effects. So, I mean, that's a big, like, detractor, and that's something that's a huge, uh, huge issue for the card in general. But basically, I'm able to just kill him this turn very very quickly and swiftly using the toad to negate a storming mirror force and then ultimately just carrying on. I was ultimately expecting the megalo to get negated somewhere along the line and I was expecting at least one of those cards face down to be a strike but after the Norden got warning it seemed like there was nothing else there other than that one card that the toad negated and I still was able to just go for game. Now next game he starts pretty strong with you know swap frog and a frog making a toad setting two and passing and now I open with Teus Dragoons again but he has max C this time to uh, to at least combat it. And so, ultimately, I'm like, okay, I can still kill him this turn. It's not really going to be a huge issue, a huge threat. And I use infantry to pop the toad, to bait the toad, and then I try to use twin twister on his back row. Turns out it's a Wabaku. And this is the point at which it's just downhill, not winnable, because at this point, I I basically have to establish a board because he's going to be able to go into Opavinia or a toad and get more cards and be able to basically shut me out so I have to keep going and so I go into a moving glaze play to you know try and at least offset the cards that I'm giving him and then make a Gaios just for the off chain like factor that it's big even though Opabinia not Opabinia oh well, yeah Opabinia and Anomal Karis more importantly are very uh, are very immune to that card it's just it's very big and Anomal Karis does just hard out it in fact I don't really know why I made it it might have just been more you know relevant to leave the Megalo and the Teus out, but ultimately it just doesn't end up being that relevant because of the fact that he still does have an Anomal Karis out that can pop monsters, and I don't have a battle phase this turn anyway because he popped the Mulan Glace on his own turn, so there is that ultimately, and so at this point this game is just very far south for me, I can't really do anything about it. He's resolving Recklessness, bringing back his traps, and there's nothing I can do about it. Maxi and Wabaku being the perfect combinations of cards to go together because I literally had game in my hand had that card not been a card like Wabaku or Threatening Roar, and I was expecting it to be another Mirror Force, because 
I'm expecting this deck to be, you know, somewhat standard Paleozoic Frogs, in which case most people either play Wabaku or they play a set of the Mirror Forces. They very rarely play both, at least in my experience. But it turns out he plays Wabaku and Stormy Mirror Force. So as I'm gaining this information going along down the line, I'm definitely just, you know, seeing how it goes. But I get to start the next game and my Diva gets max seed. And so at this point, I'm just like, you know what? I got to go for it. I, I have to. Like, th there's no way I'm going to be able to combat his board of traps with what I have access to if he's already getting draws off max C as well. And so I'm kind of okay with giving this deck draws off max C because on his first turn, the most it can really do is it can just resolve like a totally awesome and like that's usually it and then it sets traps. I mean, they could force Nova Binia through, but you could also just like deal with that, I guess, is the is the thing I'm looking for. I mean, if you're negating the frogs, they're not gonna be summoning Opa Binia. So I mean, there's that. But basically, I'm just trying to use the Toad to get through like his trap lineup and stuff like that because at this point, I feel like I feel like going into the Max C is just a very like strong investment in certain cases. Like I said, if the if the deck was a bit more standard, I think my play line is probably correct. But so I just start putting things on board because at this point, I've given him too much off Max C and he's cleared my board. I made Leo specifically because it's very hard for his deck to out Leo without a Mirror Force, and so I'm just expecting like the Leo not to get hit by Mirror Force or to be able to negate it, but my my uh, Totally Awesome gets striked, and it's just, it's it's a bad time, so. Next game, I get to start again, start with an Eptibus, start then go into a Teus Dragoons, and I get Max Seed again, it's like, oh my god, not even a chance, not even an ability to even try and go first un unopposed, and he's got both Max Seeds in hand too, that's a that's the crazy part. Not only did he open one, but he opened two, which means that after I give him all the cards off Maxi that I'm going to be giving him, he's going to just be able to Maxi me again on my next turn when I'm trying to kill him. And so at this point, I'm, I, I know like a game plan of what I'm trying to do. I'm basically trying to leave the Toad on board and uh, basically like stack up multiple Toads so that I can negate the Mirror Forces and stuff like that, and specifically like... Wabakus because I've seen that card already and so ultimately it's just something I'm trying to do but I get striked off of my negation like my negation on the dimensional barrier which prevents another toad from coming out and so ultimately it's really bad but I have game this turn as well and it's a uh, it's a big thing here that's kind of annoying me is the fact that just it's Wabaku plus Maxi so I get Maxi again on my Megalo drop after the Dimensional Barrier and Strikes Resolve, and I've got a Marksman play to pop his two remaining back row, but because of the Wabaku that I target with Marksman, I now cannot kill him. Like, as you can see, I popped both of his cards that were remaining. One of them just happened to be Wabaku, so Wabaku paired with Max C being just an incredibly frustrating thing to deal with and something that I cannot overcome, especially after I've literally just given him, like, three, four cards. Like, it's, it's, I'm expecting to end the game when I'm able to do that. And so, this one was really interesting when I played. This one, oh, man. So, I've already seen Storming Mirror Force, and I've already seen Wabaku. So, I'm seeing, you know, those cards. I'm like, okay, six potential, like, defensive cards like that. Like, essentially, Battle Trap seems like a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm not really expecting anything else. If he Storming Mirror Forces me, then great. Like, my Megalo and my Aqua Spirit and stuff are back in my hand. Like, not, not a big deal, right? No, nah, man, I get Rippling. I get Drowning Mirror Force. All my stuff goes back to my deck. So, he plays, like like more than six battle traps essentially he plays storming wabaku and drowning mirror voice i was like this is this is absolutely ridiculous but so last game i get to start and i open with a one for one and he doesn't have the max c so it's basically just a wrap straight up i'm like okay the one game that you really needed to open max c was the last one just so that i could continually be frustrated for the rest of the match uh but basically mainly the only games that were won from him were because of Max C and Max C's interactions with Wabaku as well. Like, Max C Wabaku were the two blowout games that I absolutely 100% lost, and ultimately it just it wasn't something that I even had a chance in. And even then, like, the games where I got Max Seed, like, I definitely still had shots, but it was, it was, it was whatever. I got Max Seed three out of five games, and I got Max Seed four times out of three games. So it was, it was, it was a treat. It was a weird one. And it was definitely really frustrating, but yeah, Maxi plus Wabaku was definitely the biggest, biggest, like, asset for him during these games. Because, like I said, the two games that I got Maxi and I literally had game, I got Wabaku. Like, I was able to clear his back row and attack for game in two separate cases, and both times they were Wabaku. And I was like, God damn it, can't deal with this. But anyway... 
As always, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you'd like to request any sort of decks that I play or matchups or anything like that, definitely leave them the suggestions in the comments down below, as I've already said. But other than that, definitely check out the link in the description to my Patreon page. There's different reward tiers laid out there, as well as there's a monthly giveaway that is basically applicable to almost every reward tier there. Anything as small as $2 up to, like, the maximum, I think I've said, is like a $20, like, pledge. But there's different amounts of tickets, raffle tickets you get into a monthly giveaway that I do at the end of every month that changes based off the product that is released for the month and stuff like that. And if you want to get inter if you're interested in like looking into those details, I implore you to go check out the link to my Patreon page in the description as well as on the video itself very shortly, if not now. But basically, uh, there is a way to access my Discord server through there, and I'm doing it that way to keep it very small, tight knit, and to keep it you know as the people that really, really deserve to be able to talk with me like on a daily daily basis like unrestricted access to me I, I don't want to sound dickish but it's really that's like the way it is like it's because I don't have a lot of time in my days and so the people that want it the most are going to be the people that get it essentially but other than that as always thanks for watching let me know what you guys think again in the comments down below like comment subscribe and all that nonsense check out the links on the video and the description for all that sort of nonsense again if you want to check out my patreon page it helps support me a ton and helps me like keep doing this and makes this possible as well as makes future projects that i'm currently trying to work on possible as well but other than that let me know what you think again thanks for watching and basically i'll just see you in the next video guys take care